Howdy everyone, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics and today we have one of our viewers questions and they can email these in or put them in the comments. We gather up many of these questions and actually some of them we turn into videos. So today we're going to answer one of those. How often does DNA recombine? Now, if you've watched this channel, you've probably heard recombine or recombination several times. And we're going to go over the specific answer to this. We're not going to cover everything, although we have to give you some little background so you know what we're talking about. But let's get into this question. So first off, it really depends. Because it's not an easy answer to say, yeah, DNA recombines five times. Sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. So let's go back and figure out or where is recombination happening? What does it mean in that sense? And then we can look at some numbers based on some of the data that I've gathered from people who have tested. So first off, recombination happens during meiosis. Now, if you are thinking back, I've heard of meiosis, you're probably remembering back to biology class. Now, meiosis is a method of cell division. And it only happens in our sex cells. In other words, the cells that produce eggs and the cells that produce sperm. That's the only ones. All the other cells in your body, they divide in a different way. And that is mitosis. So let's go over what that is to be able to contrast that with meiosis. With mitosis, what we have is we have one replication of our DNA. So the DNA in our nucleus, the 23 pairs of chromosomes, they replicate. So now you have 92 chromosomes. And then there is one division of that. So those 92 chromosomes divide back into 46 chromosomes and the cell divides sort of like this. If you've seen a graphic similar to this, you see that we start off with our regular DNA right here and then we get it duplicated. And so you can see basically each one of these has two now. And then these different things form and grab a hold and pull everything apart, which divides out into two cells. And the key here is, is that these two cells are identical to the parent cell. With sex cell division, now again, I told you this only happens in those cells that produce eggs and those cells that produce sperm. And it's a different, slightly different process. It starts off the same as we have a replication of DNA so that 46 chromosomes, the 23 pairs, they duplicate, replicate, and they become 92 chromosomes in this one cell. Now, next is what we care about here in answering this question. There is some number of recombinations that happen when between pairs you have parts that are analogous swap over. After that, we end up with two divisions, not one division like in mitosis, but two divisions. So first off, it divides into two cells and those two cells are not identical to the parent because those recombinations have happened. But each one of those cells has 46 chromosomes. Then we have the second division and we end up with four cells. None of these cells are the same as the parent cells because first off, they only have half the number of chromosomes. In other words, they have one set of 23 rather than a pair of 23 chromosomes. Now, some of these chromosomes may be similar to or the same as the ones in the parents, but because of recombination, most of them are different. And that is the swapping of analogous DNA between maternal and paternal chromosomes. So for instance, on chromosome number one, think about this, you have a chromosome from your mom and a chromosome from your dad. So that's the paternal and the maternal chromosome. You could have the first tail part of it swap. So now you have a maternal tail and then a paternal tail underneath it. And on the other, you have a paternal tail and a maternal tail underneath it. And eventually those two are gonna get divided into different cells. And so you can see that we have different chromosomes that have really been formed from these paternal and maternal chromosomes. All right, so let's now get into answering the question of this recombination. How often does it happen? Well, the first thing to understand is the rate that recombination happens is different in males and females. When I'm talking males and females, I'm talking egg cells 
and sperm cells. And it turns out that eggs have a little over 1.76 times the number of recombination points as sperm cells do. So they recombine more than sperms. So when we're talking about females having more recombinations than males, we're really talking about mothers having more recombination in their eggs than fathers having in their sperm. So that's the first point. The second one is that this rate of recombination, now that rate that I showed you is over the whole genome, all 22 autosomal pairs, the rate on any individual chromosome also varies. Now, you might be thinking, is there a pattern to this? Well, no, there's really no pattern to this. For instance, for egg cells, if we look at chromosome number three, number five, and number eight, and we look at a large number of them, then those egg cells on average have two times the number of recombination points as sperm do. So you notice that's higher than what the average overall is, which means there's some of these that have lower. And those ones are 14, 15, 20, and 22. They happen to have less than 1.5 times the number of recombination points as sperm. Between eggs and sperm, the number of recombinations vary. And on chromosomes themselves, the number of recombinations vary. What, what about the maximum number of recombinations? If we look at a large sample population and we try to see what the maximum number of recombinations are on any one chromosome, what we find is that, hey, for eggs, the maximum happens on chromosome number two with nine recombinations as the maximum. Now that doesn't mean that every time there's nine recombinations on number two, it just means that from all the samples that we look at, we can expect the maximum to be on chromosome number two and nine, which is interesting because chromosome two is not the longest chromosome. Chromosome number one is. And with sperm, we actually see the most recombinations on chromosome number one. Uh, but that's only seven recombinations. Because again, remember, sperm on average have less recombination than eggs. So we actually would expect that max to be less on sperms than we do on eggs. What about the minimum number of recombinations? If we looked at the maximum number of recombinations, we saw a difference there between not only the number, but also on which chromosome it happens. Well, the minimum number of recombinations is a little different because you can have no recombinations on a chromosome. In other words, you can inherit a chromosome from your mom or your dad completely intact. And that can actually happen on any of the chromosomes. So the minimum number of recombinations is zero. And that's going to be the same for both eggs and sperm. We know that on average, eggs have more recombinations than sperm. But let's look at it chromosome by chromosome. Egg chromosomes have a higher maximum number of recombinations, except for, this is another interesting thing, chromosome number 11 and 19, in which case the maximum number of recombinations is the same as sperm. As you can see here from some of the different chromosomes that I've actually numbered, there doesn't seem to be any kind of consistency between where some of these variations are. It is sort of random. Okay, let's look at the range of recombinations. And this is different, again, for egg and sperm. Now, we know that eggs have more recombinations on average than sperm. So we would expect that their range would be higher up. So I made a graph off of data that I have collected. The pink being the eggs or the maternal side, the blue being the sperm or the paternal side. And you can see that, yes, there is two distinct areas, although there's a little bit of overlap between them. So for instance, sperm have somewhere between 11 and 35 recombinations, whereas eggs have somewhere between 23 and 64 recombinations. But there's really only that small little gap there between about, what, 23 and 35, where egg and sperm might overlap. So what we can learn from this is if we were looking at a chromosome and we knew where the recombination points of that chromosome are, but we didn't know anything about the parents or the grandparents, 
If there were only 20 recombination points, we would know that chromosome came from the father's side. It is a paternal chromosome. Whereas if that chromosome happened to have 40 recombinations or more, that would be from the maternal side because egg and sperm have different ranges of the number of recombinations. Now, another interesting thing as we've looked at recombination and as you've mapped out where your recombination points are is that these recombination points happen more frequently at the ends of chromosomes. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to happen that way. It's just if we're looking at a large number of people, they happen more frequently there. And that is the key, I think, to answering this question overall is all the data that I've given you here right now is based on submissions to a project that I've been running, looking at recombination. And I've got several hundred, if not a couple of thousand different data points for this. Now, some of those numbers that I gave you might be wrong if we expand that population out to 10,000 or 50,000 different data points, but they've been pretty stable since about 500 samples to wherever I'm at right now. And so I'm fairly confident that they are really correct, maybe with a little bit of tweaks on the edges. But these are averages for the whole population. And in most cases, you're not looking at the whole population. You're looking at one person, yourself, or a match. And it's very possible that you might be an outlier for the number of recombinations for paternal chromosomes. If the average number of recombinations is around 21, that doesn't mean you're going to have 21. You could be on the far end either way. You might just have 11 recombinations or you might have 35 recombinations or anywhere in between. Um, this is just a probability of looking at a large number of people, what we would expect it to lay out as. Now, with many questions, it, once you answer it, particularly something complex like this, you're going to come up with other questions that you want answered as well. And I can't answer all of them in this video. But one question that you might come up with is, okay, so why are these sex differences in recombination? In other words, we can clearly see that between paternal chromosomes and maternal chromosomes, there's differences, not just in the number of recombinations, but in the range of recombinations, in the maximum number of recombinations, which chromosomes those fall on. There's lots of different things that we can clearly see are different between these. So why are they there? We don't know. Uh, that's something that's, that's being studied and trying to figure it out. I mean, obviously these differences exist, but we don't know exactly why they exist. Is there something on the X chromosome that's helping to regulate this? And because women have two X chromosomes, they have this extra burst, or is this something on the Y chromosome that is regulating this? And because women don't have a Y chromosome, there's no regulation of that. Or is it something else on the genome that is regulating this? Or is it some exterior thing as far as the chemical or hormonal, you know, makeup of the person? We don't know. We, we don't have an answer to that. Um, there's research going on on this, as there is with lots of other things. And maybe in the future, we will know. But if you like this video, then please click on the like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to learn something else about using visual phasing to find your recombination points, watch this video up here.